so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Amen, amen. I see the people coming on on Facebook Live, and, and I want to go ahead and, amen, just take the time to thank everybody, amen, once more and again for, thank you, Deacon Davis. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. We thank you so much for taking our time to stop by Remnant Church. Amen, amen. We do want to invite you, as, as Minister Brown said, to grab you a cup of coffee. You get your coffee and a pen and sit down. We, 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 we're going to talk about the word. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In fact, I don't know. We may have to start a program and call it a Coffee and Covenant. Amen. Because that's the title that we'll be on for the next few months. We'll be talking about the covenant. And speaking of covenant, I want to thank God for the wonderful people that have came before me. Thank God for all those that work here in the church, of course. As y'all know, it, it'd be impossible for me to do all this myself. Amen, amen. I'd be everywhere. And, and, and it wouldn't be done. Amen. So we want to take time to thank God for all the ushers, greeters, deacons, the media team. Amen. And, and thank God for the prayer that went forth. Praying the word. The praying, praying blueprint. Girl, shoot, don't mess around. Got no pain. Amen. Amen. The, the word. Amen. Praying the word. And thank God for the for the for the lessons this morning with the uh, with the marriage uh, with, with the marriage team. Amen. Great job. Pharisees, amen, talking about the, well, I'm sorry, the marriage team, uh, uh, Caleb, but great job also with the Pharisees on finances, talking about covenant. And I think marriage is on covenant too. So at any rate, of course, it's wonderful what God is doing. Amen, amen, wonderful what God is doing. Well, there is a word from the Lord, of course, and the Lord told me today to introduce or to begin to do part three of covenant. We're doing part three of the covenant, amen, and I'm uh, in fact, um, so that you can go ahead and jump in and get ahead of me, and I don't mind that. In fact, uh, keep in mind, keep in mind, I minister and we preach and teach here at Remnant Church for your edification, not necessarily for your enjoyment. We hope you enjoy the preaching. Amen. We, we, hope, you, we hope you have a good time listening, but the purpose, my purpose and the purpose of others that grace this, this pulpit is to minister to you a word that's going to edify and encourage you to walk out God's purpose and plan for your life. We'll make it as enjoyable as possible. In fact, uh, in fact, we're gonna have a great time on on, on, on next uh, next Saturday. Uh, next Saturday, of course, uh, uh, Jay Danielle, Amen, Amen. I don't know if she's in here or not, but at, at any rate, uh, they're going to be having a pre-release party, Amen, right out here in the parking lot. So, 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 so here at Remnant Church, it's going to be a, at 6, at 6.15 until, amen, I'm just playing, yeah. at 6.15, there's going to be a parking lot party, amen, and we're going to, and we're going to have some fun, it's going to be crazy, and, and, and it's going to be, it's going to be fun, but, but the intent is not necessarily fun, but it's to minister to people, amen, so, so I want you to know, of course, you know, you know, our, our purpose here is to edify and encourage you and help you to come into God's plan and purpose for your life amen so with that being said of course my my assignment today as we go further in the covenant my assignment today given by the lord of course is to to, to take you further into the things of the covenant and i want to show you today amen your covenant citizenship my goal today or this week because if i don't do it today i will pick it up on wednesday that's the beauty of being a pastor Amen. Amen. My goal today is to show you your covenant citizenship, to show you how and where you fit in into God's plan and God's promises for your life. Um, amen. I, I, I want to make sure um, some people, some people when they hear, uh, for example, Deuteronomy 28, and we're going to deal with that scripture. You're not to turn to it, but Deuteronomy 28. Is one of the scriptures we'll be teaching on coming up, coming up here sometime in the next few weeks or so. Um, but some people uh, look at Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 through 14, and, and that's the promises, the covenant promises of God. They look at that as being a promise to the Jews only. And, 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 and in fact, some of y'all may have ran into people, I know I have, have ran into people uh, in times past that when you, when you, when you show them the promises of God regarding blessings and protection and provision uh, in the Bible, they'll tell you, no, nah, man, you read that out of context. Uh, that's for the Jews only. 
and that you're not Jew, you're just Christian. Amen. Well, well, I want to make sure you know going forward that, that, that because you are a Christian, you are also now a spiritual Jew. And every benefit, every promise that was made to them also has been made to you. I, I, I want to show you today, I want to show you today, of course, that you were adopted, your adoption papers. I, I want to show you your adoption papers signifying and showing that you are legally, that you are legally a child of God. And that because of your legal position in God, you are now, you are not qualified to receive every promise that God has provided. Amen. amen. I, I don't want no, no doubt in your mind, amen, that, that, that what God has said about you, uh, it, it, I don't want you doubting that it's true. And I don't want you to regulate things to a certain area of your mind to where you don't get the benefit from it because you think that ain't you. He's talking about somebody else. In fact, it's kind of sad that every time we hear something good, sometimes we think it's going to happen to somebody, somebody else. Amen. Amen. We're going to break that today. We're going to break that today. Um, now, don't turn to your Bibles yet, but I invite you and I encourage you to get ahead of me. I want you, I'm going to give you the scriptures now. So you can start. You ain't got to read. Don't read them right now. I'm going to talk about something else right now. But I want you to read them so that when we meet together again, you'll already know, you already know where I'm going. And then you can amen through your mask a little more. Now you ain't got to amen. 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 You, 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 you have a, you have a, yes sir, you have an air of confidence because you don't read it and studied it for yourself. Amen. I'm giving you homework is what I'm doing. So, so the scriptures we're going to be using, of course, regarding your covenant citizenship, citizenship, and your adoption papers, we're going to be going through Galatians chapter 3. Don't turn there yet. Galatians chapter 3 is where we're going to be going. Amen. Amen. It's going to be good. Galatians chapter 3. Amen. And I'm not going to tell you the scriptures. In fact, you probably find that I'm not going to give you specific scriptures. Because I want you to read the whole chapter. Amen. I'd rather you read the whole chapter and run across something that sounds like what I'm talking about before I talk about it. So therefore, so therefore, now you're moving into more of a rhema, amen. I hope I'm not going too deep, but you're going more into a rhema type of a, a rhema type of realization versus just logos, amen. See what's going on right now, ladies and gentlemen, is God is taking remnant church, our church, to another level. And, and whereas things, and some of y'all know that I taught on this, that that lab going over the uh, some of our old videos. We've been teaching our covenant since we started. Uh, but we never went far in some, some areas, but now God has released me to go further and really go ahead and get into it. Um, but he wants the people to get to where it's more than just a word called covenant. That, that they'll actually start correlating. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That they'll actually start correlating uh, every blessing with their covenant promise. That they'll actually start. Did anybody watch this? Uh, yes, sir. Um, in fact, right now, we're experiencing uh, great financial blessings. Amen. In, in fact, I'm going to give you a covenant report. Um, uh, there's, 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 there's more good news going on than what's being said. Um, has anybody, has anybody, and of course I've said already that, that, that of course, uh, that August is new beginning, finance, God going to bless, so on and so forth. Now watch this. Uh, has anybody received any extra blessings in the month of August? Raise your hand. And you can, I see y'all like that too. Look, look, look around the room. Look around. Now, now, now watch this. You raise your hand again. Now watch this. I want you, my goal, if I may, my goal from the Lord is that you will get to the point to where you will correlate that blessing to your covenant. To, to where you'll go, man, hey, hey, to where you'll go when you get that unexpected check, you go, oh man, look at God, look at God. But let's go a step further. That's my covenant word. Can we practice for a moment? Say, Lord, Lord I, thank you I thank you that my covenant, that my covenant is, working. is working. Amen, amen. In other words, every time God, hey, watch this. Um, when somebody run the light and the Lord told you to slow down mm -hmm. and the light was green, anybody ever been through that? Mm -hmm. you, you, you ever glad that, that you slowed down? Uh, amen, at intersection because dude went through it? <laughs> amen, that's your covenant. covenant. See, and you want to get the more, now hear me now, and the more you're conscious of your covenant working, 
the more confidence you have in your covenant. Amen. If I'm trying to write that down. The more you are conscious of your covenant working. How does it work? It, it, it works in terms of provision. Amen. It works in terms of anytime there's some kind of protection. Amen. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Uh, your covenant is working every time you have a whoo moment. Anybody know what you're talking about? Woo! <laughs> Man, that could have been, that's your covenant. And, and the more you recognize your covenant working, the more you have confidence in your covenant. Now, why did I say that? Because Satan's scheme right now is to rob the body of Christ of their confidence and courage in God. The devil wants to get us so isolated and disconnected and, 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 and discombobulated to where there is no, there, yes sir, to that there is no real cornelia and therefore there is no, there is no, uh, yes sir, there is no sharing of testimonies and, and, and there is no, yes sir, and there is no breeding of faith necessary for the covenant. Because when I didn't know that you getting blessed and you getting blessed, and if I just look at my mess, then guess what? I think the covenant ain't working. And the devil is trying to steal the confidence of God's people. The devil's plot right now is to rob God's people of their courage and their confidence in God. Hebrews, open your Bible, Hebrews chapter 10. Amen, amen. Hebrews chapter 10. In verse 35. Mm -hmm. In fact, just write it down. We'll look at it later. I want to go. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, 30, verse 35 says, Don't throw away your confidence. See, the devil wants you to throw away what God has done, what God is doing, and what God wants to do. He wants us to forget the blessings so that we will no longer expect the blessings. Because when I forget that God brought me through yesterday, then it's going to be hard for me to expect God to bring me through tomorrow. Yes, Hear me now. When I forget that God brought me through yesterday, the devil is hoping that when I'm hit with something new, that I will forget what God is going to, what God has brought me, that I will forget what God has already done and not expect what God wants to do. See, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so, so. In fact, there's more good news than what folk think. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's a lot more good news. And in fact, I, I, I mentioned it a minute ago, and I'm gonna say it again. Some folks think y'all not do this, but I gotta say it. I, I gotta say it, ladies and gentlemen. I was sitting down, going over the church's finances since March. I'm sorry, y'all. And we've had more offerings. I don't. Is, is that right, finance, finance team? We have seen more money during the pandemic than we did prior to. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm laughing because the devil thought we would forget our covenant. He thought we would forget what God has done. We, we have seen more financial blessings during this time than we did post-covenant. I'm like, look, this is amazing. I'm sorry, post-pandemic. In fact, uh, financial manifestations, even personally, my wife and I, we have gotten to where uh, every, uh, in fact, every week we keep a log. And it's amazing what God is doing. Amen. What am I doing? I am recording the good news so that as time go by, when bad news comes, my good news would kill the bad. Amen. Amen. I'm trying, I'm trying to find it. I may not get done today. I'm just trying to find a way. I'm trying to find the most expressive and simplistic ways possible to express to you who you are, whose you are, and what you got in him. So that you would get so much to where you got you had to where you have so much confidence oozing in the covenant that when something hits you, your response is laughter and that God got it. Amen. That your response is laughter and God. In fact, this morning I was laughing because yes, sir. This morning my wife tripped out because I've been I've been tripping. Uh, I'm talking about good news right now. Um, because I, you know I've had a I, I had an old injury, hey, Mister. Uh, you know years ago, uh, you know you know. Hey, well, I ain't gonna tell you how it happened, hey, Amen. Uh, but I got stabbed in the leg back when I was about fifteen, and uh, it's it's a whole other story. Hey, hey, 
come to some of the men's we were talking about all what happened and what was going on that day. I wouldn't say it was pre-say. Somebody say pre-say. Pre BC day, BC day. Anyway, and so for years we have a two-story house. And for years my wife has watched me, you know, go upstairs. <laughs> you know, and sometimes rather slow. As some of you may have noticed here. But she tripped out this morning, and I don't know if she'd been seeing it, but, for the, <laughs> but I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Because for the, for, the, for the past few weeks, I've been running up and down the stairs. Amen. I've been Amen. running because I've been like, Lord, this is a trip. I don't mess around in Gaddy Hill. <laughs> Amen. I said, Lord, I said, Lord, this is a trip. And I'm like, man. So this morning, now I've been going up and down. I've been laughing. I'm laughing. laughing. I come, she didn't see me. She was in bed. Hey, hey I'm coming upstairs last night going, this is a trip, Lord. <laughs> and I'm used to touching stuff. Go, I said, Lord, this is a trip. Yes, I said, Lord, you love. He said, so that's my covenant manifesting. Amen. That's the covenant manifesting. And in fact, so this morning, we came downstairs, you know, after getting dressed, and she was behind me. What did you, you do? She tripped out. You, and she started laughing. She said, what you, ooh, what you, did? What did you say? You said something crazy. Said, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> she tripped out. And I, I, I tried it down. I said, yeah, I tried it down. She said, I know you. I said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I've got to tell you. <laughs> I don't mess around got healed during the pandemic. See, that's my covenant work. See, 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 that's your, see, these things are still working. The only hindrance to your covenant working is your obedience and your believing. The only two main factors, well, two main factors, yes, sir, and it can cover some things, but your obedience and your believing. In fact, I, I didn't tell you all this, but, but there have been several people um, that, that, that have been stricken, uh, even those associated with our church with COVID-19. Uh, in fact, uh, Pastor Varma. Pastor Barma was hospitalized severely. In fact, he sent me the message, uh, I guess uh, about a week or so ago. Uh, he was in the hospital with COVID-19 and they said severe case. And I'm like, whoa, now, I didn't get a chance to tell y'all because I hadn't been preaching. And not to mention um, what we've been doing here at Remedy Church is sending Psalms 107 and 20. You may want to write that down. We, it, it says that God sent his word and healed them. So what I did, of course, when they told me and he told me what was going on, I sent the word. Amen. I, 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 I said, well, son, Psalm 107, 20 says that, that God has sent the word and you are healed. Amen. Well, anyhow, long story short, uh, he sent me a document uh, here on, what was that, three, four days ago? I guess it was Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, he sent me a document on Monday um, or the Sunday, last Sunday, that he got released. In fact, the document said the document showed how how severe his uh, his COVID nineteen condition was, but it st it was stamped on the bottom, and I wish I could show it. It was stamped on the bottom uh, that that he was completely released and he has completely recovered. Amen. And he's like, whoa! And that's his covenant work. I, I've had folk, we've had folk call. Um, there's people by way of phone um, that had COVID-19 symptoms and was diagnosed. Some right here uh, within the congregation uh, had relatives that called in. And sure enough, Lord said, send the word. Once again, I, I, you know, just Lord, in the name of Jesus, Psalm 107, 20. Uh, uh, you, you healed in the name of Jesus. And they have been healed. In fact, there's been several people that since the pandemic and specifically within the last 30 days that has been completely healed and totally recovered from diseases, including COVID-19. See, God is still at work, but we can't transmit the good news because we're no longer fellowshipping around the good news. We're only doing a Facebook study and, and different, and we can't really get together and share like we should. In, terms, in fact, uh, I'm, I'm being for my wife. Amen. My wife uh, just got another report this morning. Amen. Yeah, yeah, this morning, just a minute ago. She walked in my office, I'm in that study. She walked in my office a minute ago. And she showed me another report. Some of y'all know, of course, uh, that when she was first diagnosed, when she was first diagnosed, um, her cancer rating was like about 10,000. Amen, amen. And my baby girl, I said, my baby, my baby, stop. That baby's strong. Amen, amen. amen. 10,000. Well, guess what? As of this morning, I, it went down some to 2,000, I think, a few weeks. And now, as of this morning, it's at 1,800. Hallelujah. See, that's my covenant work. See, 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 and, and, and this is always happening, but the devil wants us not to be conscious of it because if we're not conscious 
of the covenant. And if we're not aware of the blessings, then we'll forget it. And we'll eventually go from having a victor status to becoming a victim status. Because then we'll get to where we become victims of our circumstances. We will get to where whatever the devil throws at us, we'll just lay down and take it without actually speaking and coming against what the devil is trying to do. Why? Because the devil does not, yes sir, because the devil does not want us to be covenant minded. Amen. In fact, I'm kind of laughing. Um, in fact, yes sir, uh, turn with me to Ephesians mm -hmm. chapter 2. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2. And, and, and for, the, for the sake of this particular teaching, I'm using my easy reader virgin Bible. My easy reading is, is uh, known as the ERSV. It's the easy reader version. Um, and, and this, of course, is not necessarily a translation as it is more of somebody's interpretation. Uh, you know, in, in other words, this is not a, I, I strongly recommend, amen, um, the King James, because it's an actual translation of the Hebrew and the Greek. And let that be the one, let that be the one Bible that you run reference from, but it's okay to look at other other people's interpretations. Amen. In other words, in other words, they read the King James version through the lenses of their own mind, their own will, and their own emotions based on their experiences. Okay? So anyhow, but so so understand that. But I found this to be a very, very clear and very easy, easy, uh, a very uh, a reader friendly one for this particular teaching on our covenant citizenship. Now watch this. Now watch this. Now, now keep in mind the devil does not want you to remember all the blessings. He he, he, he don't want you to remember that Pastor Farmer got healed. He, he don't want you to, to, to remember all the mighty and powerful things that God is doing and that he, he don't want you to remember that big old house you got that you prayed for and God gave it to you. Amen. He, he, he don't amen amen so Amen. He don't want you to remember. <laughs> now, now watch this. Amen. In fact, what the devil is trying to do is not just steal your confidence. It's not just steal your courage. What he's hoping to do is to even steal your hope. See, there's a spirit right now that, that's, that, that's pervading the Christian population and just being frank, the entire world. There's a spirit that, that's causing depression and, and weariness and, and, and it's really stressing out people, the billions of people all over this planet. And, and, and this spirit is a spirit of hopelessness. Somebody say hopelessness. hopelessness. See, the devil wants you to have no hope. He, he knows that if he can get you in a hopeless state, then you won't even, see, the word hope meaning, you don't, meaning expecting something good to happen. The devil wants us to get to where we don't even expect anything good. And as y'all know, and I told you before, the, the number one universal law in life is that you get what you expect. You get what you, and the devil wants to get you to where you don't expect God to move. That you don't expect to be healed that you don't expect that bill to be paid. He wants you to get to where you, you have no anticipation of God coming through on your behalf. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the opposite of a covenant. Covenant is simp simply put, it's God's promise to provide and to protect you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Say my covenant my is God promising. promising. To provide, to provide and to protect me. Protect me. See, in, in fact, in fact, I remember somebody sent us a text to my wife, and they said a promise is a promise. <laughs> somebody said a promise, a promise. is a promise. It's a promise. Amen. And, and, and God made a promise to us that when we go through, He has to get us out. He has to either remember, He has to either tell me what's wrong, or Provide or do the solution himself. Now watch this. So, 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 so the devil wants to steal your hope. He, he wants you to think, ah, man, it's too far gone. Ah, oh, no, not this time. Ah, right, man, it ain't gonna work. You, you've been too bad. You ain't been to church. Uh oh. No, no, it ain't gonna work this time. You gonna cut somebody out? 
Yeah, no, 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 God ain't gonna bless you today because you don't messed up again. And, and see, and this is what messed folk up, ladies and gentlemen, we'll talk about it later on. But in covenant, you are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Amen. In other words, in covenant, you always are in position to receive. You just have to believe it. But watch this. But outside of covenant, when the devil makes you or have you to sin, he wants you to condemn yourself. And when you condemn yourself, you talk yourself out of what God has already given you. See, the devil knows. Remember Luke 10, 19? He did not turn to it. But it said that God has already given us authority over all the works of the devil. And by covenant, by way of covenant, you have you have authority over every trick, trap, and every and every and everything the devil does to come against you. You've already won. But the devil wants you to think. You can't win because some you did. And covenant, yes sir, covenant knocks out the sin consciousness. Boy, I tell you, boy, I tell you. We're gonna talk about it later. That's not my message today. See, and see, and this is why you have joy all the time. See, this is why pastor, pastor ain't pastor, no, he ain't perfect. My, my family, my dog, amen. Uh, and I had a long way from it. But I, I, I tell you this though. You ain't going to stop me from believing God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You ain't going to stop me from knowing and operating in this covenant. Now watch this. I do want to say this. But watch out for unforgiveness. Amen. I ain't going to talk about that right now. But love, your love walk is your love walk is the number one obedience factor when it comes to walking out covenant. Amen. Amen. Watch your love walk. Don't, don't get no foolishness with folks. You know, don't don't fight folk. Don't get to mm -mm, that's not cool. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Man, love people. And if somebody don't love you, you love them and keep going. Amen. Understand everybody ain't for you, with you, or, or, or by you. Let folk go. Let them do what they do. You stay in covenant. Amen. You got too much to do. Amen. And the devil's trying to steal your hope. And watch this. Watch this. And yes, sir. Whew. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you got a covenant, no matter what you're facing. God got to do it. Say, I got a covenant. And God got to come through. And what that does is takes the pressure off you because God got you. Now, hold up. But once again, now, well, let me, let me go and read this out. Because the devil don't, don't want you to hope. In fact, uh, it's uh, Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to start with verse number 12. Now watch this. Amen. It says, remember that in past you were without Christ and you were not citizens of Israel. And you did not know the agreements with the promises. You see that? That God made to his people. What he said, you had no hope and you did not know God. See? And, and here's the thing, watch this. There was a time before you were born again that you had no hope and you did not know God. Watch this. And when you don't know your covenant, when you don't know the policy that God has already provided for your protection and your provision, then of course you have no hope. When you are not conscious, mindful, when you when, when you don't consider, when you don't know, when you don't remember that you have a covenant, a, 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 an agreement, a policy, an issue with, with, with God, then guess what? You have no hope. But the devil is alive. Everybody that's born again by the sound of my voice, you have a policy, you have a covenant, you have a written agreement with God that God got to come through. Now, if that's you, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, let me tell y'all something. When my wife was diagnosed with cancer, amen, when she was diagnosed, and I, and I, and I, and I sat there, you know, in fact, you know, because you know, a lot of things that I done done, I forget. You know, if the covenant ain't always in front of your mind, you'll forget it, you know. Especially when you don't need it. But what happened was that when the doctor said what he said, um, of course, I have experienced and I've seen, I've laid hands on folk in this church that have been healed from cancer. So I know I've seen God. In fact, they tried to, I, I know God heals cancer. Amen. Somebody, 
Somebody said, he said he know God here, counselor. <laughs> Not that he does. And now watch it. But, can I be honest? Can I be frank? Yeah, I read on a bit. But, I was a little bit wondering about that cancer bill. Somebody say cancer bill. Cancer bill. See, there's a bill. I, I don't know. I ain't know that's a bill. Well, see, doctors don't necessarily work for free. You know, and, and St. Jude, she's too old to go to St. Jude's. Amen. Let y'all let y'all deal with that. Amen. <laughs> they won't take my baby. Amen. Amen. All right, let that. So so check this out. So check this out. Somebody hear me. And, and so what happened? What happened, Reg? I said, oh Lord, okay. But then I as I was sitting there and I remember, and I, I told, I don't know if you remember it or not, but I sat there and I started smiling because about 30 years ago, a guy approached me. An old friend called me and told me that he had an old friend that was selling cancer insurance. And about 30 years ago, you know, we were much younger and spry, and I just knew I didn't need no cancer insurance. And, and, and so I told my friend when he called me some 30 years ago about, I said, man, and when he called me about getting cancer insurance, I told him I'm good. You know, we are, right, man, we young, we're going to live forever. Amen. That's how we feel, you know. But lo and behold, when I when I got off the phone with him, I was prompted to call him back and found out how much it was. I did. Long and short, I went ahead and met with him, and the guy made us such an offer. He cut us such a deal. And in fact, it's a famous uh, a ball player. He's a he's a you know he, you know he, I mean he's he's a I mean he's an NBA he's a bad dude uh, that you know that that we worked a wonderful guy. In fact, I was I was more so. I think I was more so enamored at the time to meet him, you know, and to sit down and have lunch with this uh, this great, you know. Uh, but 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 what happened is that that great came up with a great price. It was so cheap. I said, man, we can afford that. I said, we can afford that every month, can we? She said, yeah. And we signed up thirty years ago. Amen. What happened? Right there in the car. I said, hey, I just remembered that I got a company. Hallelujah. I remember, I said, hold up, Lord. In fact, when we moved, I packed those papers some 15 years ago, and I put them upstairs in the little spot that I put all my documents. And so when I got home, I went upstairs. And watch this. When I realized that we had already had cancer insurance, I had hope. Amen. I, I felt like Jesse Jackson. Hope came alive. <laughs> I said, hmm. And, and I don't know if she's, I don't know if went, but, but I came home on a mission. Because now I'm driving, Marta. And now I'm driving going, mm hmm. I sure is. Because you know your mind go, no, it should be up there, up there, up there. Mm hmm. Soon I'm, okay. I'm going straight to that spot. I got hope now. I went straight to the spot. And sure enough, opened it up. I said, oop, there it is. <laughs> I said, Lord, look at here. I, I don't know if I shot that. I said, oh, Lord. I said, oh, Lord, look at here. And, and I said, oh, Lord, we do have the policy. Amen. I said, ooh, hallelujah. Now watch this. I said, ooh, now, now my hope feeling good. But then I had to go ahead and open it up. And when I opened it up, amen, amen. When I opened it up, the first page of every, I'm talking about covenant now, the first page of every insurance policy is called the debt. Declarations page. The, the, the declarations page is, is like a summary of all the benefits and the coverages that you have with that policy. And as I sat there and opened up that next, I, I saw that I saw that the policy was still in force. I saw I saw that it covered my wife and me. It covered and I, and as, as I read that first page, as I read that first page, and as I read over the deck. Declarations, the benefits and the coverage associated with my covenant, I started getting more faith. Amen. I, I started shouting on the inside. I, I started feeling mighty, mighty good. And I said, Lord, I said, Lord, look at here. I said, Oh my goodness, this is. I said, Oh, and we did. I said, Well, we did this thirty years ago, and we had it on draft. So therefore, I never really noticed the money going out. What am I saying, ladies and gentlemen? This is your insurance policy. This is your declarations page. And your declarations page 
associated with the covenant of God includes all your benefits, all your coverages, and all the, in fact, I love this. I think I love this. In fact, they call it supplemental. So supplemental means it helps you out when you need it. Now, come on, boy. Hey, 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 it's supplemental. I said, what now? I said, look, can we already get Blue Cross? I said, okay, this is a supplemental. They cover expenses that the other coverage don't cover. Oh, I, I said, Lord, I said, oh, Lord, look at here. I got excited. I got excited. I got so excited. I turned the next page, y'all. I turned the next page of the covenant. I'm sorry. I turned the next page of the ship. My hope had went to faith. My faith had went to expectation. And then I read the first paragraph on the next page that was going into the benefits. And it said the first page was a, a certain dollar amount that they give you just for being diagnosed. I read that page. I looked at our circumstance. I said, we qualify. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we qualify. I went ahead and did, watch this, and I did what the insurance or what the covenant said. I filled out, I obeyed, and I activated my declarations page by doing the things that they told us to do and they told me to do in order to get the benefits and the coverages. And sure enough, y'all, I'm just going to trip y'all out. And sure enough, y'all, because I didn't know for sure how much or what or what. I just did what it said. See, when you do what it said, the outcome is not up to you. You just got to know you do what it said. See, see, in covenant, it's not a matter of you trying to figure it out. It's not a matter of you trying to work it out. It's not your problem to solve. Your job is going to obey and do what God said to do. And so what I did, I filled it out. I sent it out. And sure enough, and now I got peace. I'm in the house now. Knowing she healed. Because my faith, she healed. She healed. She healed. But I'm walking around. They said, now I'm walking around in faith with a degree of expectancy. And lo and behold, y'all, just going to trip you out. A check came in the mail. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, look at here. It's a check. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I opened up the check, and the check was way bigger than I. I said, Lord, look at him. I said, I said, this is amazing. He said, son, this is the same way with covenant. He, he, he said, tell the people that I have promised to solve their problems. I have promised, I have promised them that I'm going to fix them. I have solutions to go along with their situations. He said, tell the people that I have made promises. I have, I have a policy in place that's all theirs. All they have to do is read the declaration page and start making some declarations. Oh, I'm sorry, I get bilingual. And start making some declarations. Read the benefits page and start expecting some benefits. Read the coverage page and start walking around like you cover. Glory to God. Glory to God. Start walking around not under the circumstance, not a victim of the problem, but you are victorious because you have a covenant and a battle is not yours, it's the Lord. Woo, if you got a covenant in the house, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, Lord, the, the, the Lord said, I, I, I sat there and I got excited. I got excited. I got excited. I said, Lord, this is something. In fact, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share this with y'all. Amen. Amen. We're going to go. We're going to make Galatians 3. I don't think we are. Amen. We're going to start there next week. We start there Wednesday night. Now watch this. Let me end with this. Amen. No, see, I ain't, no. I want you just to get your covenant out. No, I ain't trying to hurry up and do nothing. It's more important that you, I'm watching people step out of covenant, man. It's dangerous, y'all. It's different out there. And you got to stay in covenant, ladies and gentlemen. Stay covered. Stay covered. Stay covered. The devil will trick you with a good feel and get you out on a limb. Stay covered. I'm just, now, we'll, we'll stay covered. Stay covered. Stay covered. Now watch this. My mama. Amen. I'm going to hold up. Mm -hmm. My mama. Amen. One of the covenant scriptures we're going to use. I'm going to hold up. Amen. I, it's, it's some more, but I'm going to hold up. One of the one of the covenant scriptures that we're going to use, Amen, is uh, and, and, and we're going to do the, you know, we're going to start showing you the actual, uh, the actual uh, uh, paperwork or the, uh, the actual citizenship documentation in, in Genesis three. But watch this. Um, 
one of the uh, one of the covenant scriptures we're going to use is Deuteronomy 28. You want to begin to start reading that, and and you want to you want to especially start reading and meditating Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 through 14. Okay, now, now don't go don't go past 14 right now. I don't want you to get nothing else. I, I don't want you to get condemned right now. This is not the time. Oh my God, this is not the time to be condemned. Okay, it's not the time for you to feel bad and. And, 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. In fact, yes, sir. In fact, I decree and declare that as of today, all pity parties are canceled. Amen. The door of woe is me is closed. Amen. But but I got to share this as we get ready to close. And it's offering time. Amen. Y'all don't know to do the cash out and what have you. Now watch this. My mom. Amen. Bless her heart. And, and God bless. God rest her soul. Um, it was prophesied, of course, years ago that my wife and I, you know, would be blessed to a certain degree. And I remember uh, some 20, 30 years ago, letting my mother hear uh, the prophecy, amen, uh, regarding, it was on tape, we had cassette tapes then, and, and, and a well-known a well -known, a well, a well -known prophet had a, had, had a you want to come up with it? Had, a, had, had prophesied, and there's several. In fact, we had all our prophecies on, on cassette tape. And we play them all the time as we were out and about. And so what happened, of course, um, um, uh, my mama heard the prophecies about how we're going to be blessed. How God's going to bless us. At this time, when she heard those prophecies, I, I got my wife up here so you can see her face. You know, you know, a lot of times you can tell when the preacher tells the truth by his wife's face. Amen. You know, you can kind of, you know, you can kind of, not that we lie, but, you know. But, 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 but I, I believe, in fact, I believe uh, one of the prophecies was concerning that we were model glory uh, from from uh, from uh, our, our, our father in the faith, Apostle Ellie Braggs. Amen. Apostle Braggs, he said, God's going to use y'all. Now, at that time, he, he said, God's going to use y'all to model the glory. And we said, wow. It tripped us out because we were living with my mama at that time. So at that time, we were homeless, and we were staying with mama. And mama was tripping out because I come home excited. You know, we'd be at church all night, all day and all night. And, and, and she would trip out because and we would come home excited, still living with her. Amen, amen. You know, you got to praise while you're waiting on the promise. Amen. Amen. The, the, the best thing to do, if you haven't already read your benefits, made your declarations, and mailed them off, is praise them while you're waiting on, amen, the promise to be manifested. And, and so showing up, she saw us, of course, and we home to stand with mama. In fact, in fact, my mama, being mama, she would uh, she, she, she would take the newspaper in the morning. Her thing every morning was drink coffee and read the newspaper, Reg. And she would read the newspaper, and, 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 and Deacon Beavers, she would circle all the houses that were available that she thought that we could live in. She said, baby, I love y'all, but y'all had to get away from and, and, and so I let my mama hear, the, I let my mama hear, you know, these promises from these great men and women of God about what God's going to do for us. And she said, okay, baby. She said, okay. And, and, and they would say, you know, and, and she would comment, like, well, baby, now, you know, now, 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 you know, and other folk would say, well, that's for the Jews, and that's for somebody else. That ain't for you. You see, that's what the devil wants you to think. He, he wants you to think that's for somebody else. You see, that's the, the, the biggest trick that the devil uses is to change and shift your mind. So anyhow, so what happened, um, lo and behold, as we started walking out the promises, not only did God bless us, to get out of my mama's house. <laughs> Amen. But he blessed us to buy 20 some houses. Hallelujah. And my mama witnessed us getting debt free. And she saw us buy car at the car and bless her with cars and do this and do stuff. She saw us. She saw what paper. She saw us get blessed. And, and my mama like that, baby, what scriptures that you use in the game? <laughs> and I said, Mama, and my sister would attest to that. And I said, Mama. It's Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14. She said, let me get that. And, and, and sure enough, my mama, at my mama's house, amen. And, and I can say this because I'm talking about my mama. She had Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14. She had it laid out on her bed every morning and every night. Now, whether she read it or not, I don't know. Because I said, mama, that's good to have the scriptures laid out. It is good to say that you read it and that you're familiar with it. But mama, I said, mama, just having it open and laying it on your bed, it's not going to work. 
See, the covenant doesn't work by osmosis. The covenant is not automatic. The covenant works by you working the covenant. I said, I said, Mama, that's nice. And I said, you sure got it right there, Mama. She said, yeah, baby, I, I read it in the I said, well, that's good. Said, that's good, Mama. That's good, Mama. But, but, but Mama didn't tithe. Mama, Mama brought some other principles. Amen. Is that you know, like walking in love. Because see, that love walk void your covenant. Mama, just, mama didn't do all the things. See, she was looking at the blessing. But keep in mind, keep this in mind. God, yes sir, with every physical blessing, God is trying to teach a spiritual lesson. Now, I love my mama, and she did get saved. Yeah, I led her to Christ, of course. And mama got born again, got healed. She saw all kinds of wonderful things happen in her life, and she did. You bet you start giving and blessing and so on and so forth. But at that point in time, she didn't. And because she didn't, she didn't, she knew something, but she could not experience the full benefit because she failed to activate it through her obedience. So what I'm saying to you today is as, as those that are present, I'm standing on your feet. And as the ushers here, I get ready to collect the offering. And amen. As you know, of course, you can do cash app, uh, remnant C, amen, give like me. Uh, Remnant Church, Remnant Church, Little Rock, PayPal, of course. You can mail your offering to 11715 Rainwood Road. Amen. 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 So, you know, uh, uh, now, watch this. Because this is part of your covenant connection is your time. Yes, sir. Let me say this. And ladies and gentlemen, stay with God. Don't go for them suits. Amen. I'm a real man of God. I'm going to tell you now. Don't, 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 get, don't get tricked. Amen. Don't get tricked. Hear me now. The word works. Now, you're going to do a sister, you do that on your own, but make sure you still tithe. And, hey, tithing is your supplemental Amen. in case that don't work. And, and, and in case your upline decide not to do what they're going to do this time. Hey, 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 in case your upline had, a, had, a, had an extra expense that they didn't tell you about and now you left out. I'm prophesying. Amen. It's all right. You got to love me. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. It's the word, y'all. It's the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. And the word is so simple. Love God. Obey God. Love his people. And watch God love on you. You got your offering ready? Lift it up. Say, Lord, I thank you. I sow this seed, offering, tithe as part of my covenant connection with you. And Lord, and Lord, because I sow, because, because I believe, because your, word, your word, I thank you, I thank you for, you. Every right, for every covenant right, benefit, benefit coverage, coverage, protection, protection and, provision and provision for my life. For my life. I, thank you, I thank you that according to your covenant, all my needs are met, all my finances are met, and, and, and even where I don't have finances, where I don't have finances you give me faith. I hear this. You're giving me favor. You have given me favor. With my landlord. With my landlord. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. That you've given us favor. With your mortgage company. With your mortgage company. Lord, because I have a covenant with you. I'm not limited. I am not limited. My financial lack. Because you got my back. Because you got my back. And what I can't do. And what I can't do. You do. You do. What I can't pay, what I can't pay, you pay. You pay. What I don't have, what I don't have, you give it to me. You give it to me. Thank you. Shut it the most, son. And Lord, right now, and Lord, right now, with this seat, with this seat, with my tie, with my tie, I release, I release my covenant angels to go and usher in finances and faith from the north from the south from the east from the west Lord I thank you by coming in I usher in finances and faith and faith and faith and faith and faith thank you Father 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 Lord, we thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Lord, even as we close this service, there may be somebody 
out there that needs to get a covenant. You may not be born again. You may not be saved. I, you know, I collected already. You may not be born again. We want to invite you to join the covenant. Amen. Amen. As you know, right now, we're, we're not having public services, but as you can tell, some folk up in here, you go home. Amen. And, and, and don't worry, we're going to open up soon. We're going to open up to the public soon, and we're going to have a crazy service. It's going to be a crazy, crazy service. But speaking of crazy service, I do want to make mention of what we got the uh, release party. Crazy service, crazy party in the parking lot. But at any rate, that's going to be next Saturday at 6 o'clock. Uh, that's going to be Jay Danielle's release party. But also, there's another party in heaven that you want to be a part of. There are many people that are passing right now, transitioning. And the sad reality, another truth is that, is that heaven is not necessarily automatic. Just like the covenant is not automatic, going to heaven is not automatic. You must be born again. You must be born again. Everybody ain't resting in peace that we think is resting in peace. You got to be saved. You, you got to have your life insurance policy uh, paid up by simply receiving Jesus Christ before you leave earth. So if that's you today, and you want to make sure you're saved. You know, I, I, I mean, yeah, sure, you want the rent paid and house no paid and all that good stuff. But ladies and gentlemen, all that is weak if you don't know him and if you don't know where you're going. In fact, the greatest consolation with going through hopelessness and hell on earth is knowing that you got heaven to look forward to when you leave. So if you're here today, and if you're inside of my voice, want to make sure you're born again, want to make sure you're saved, I want to lead you in a prayer. We're going to lead you in a prayer right here at Brimley Church. So if you would, just repeat after us. Say, Father, Father we, repent we repent of our sins. Of our sins. I, ask you, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to forgive me, to forgive me and, to cleanse me and to cleanse me from all sin, from all sin and unrighteousness. And unrighteousness. Lord, I ask, Lord, I ask that, you will apply that you will apply the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus to, my soul, to my soul. That you will cleanse me you will cleanse from, all sin, from all sin and unrighteousness. And unrighteousness. Lord, I ask, Lord, I ask today, today that you will make me, you will make me born, again. born again. That you will accept me, that you will accept me into your family of believers. Into your family of believers. And so today, by faith, by faith, I stand, I stand adopted, adopted into, your into your family. I stand, I stand born again, born again say, say, now, now my, new my new address is not just the one here, but now I have a new address in heaven. And I thank you, Lord, that when I pass from this place, heaven is my home. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I want to thank y'all once again. We're going to pick this up, of course, on Wednesday. We're going to pick up this study. I'm going to, I'm, this time I'm going to go where I'm at. We're going to, we're going to get Galatians chapter 3. And, and the reason why I stopped, I want us to really get a hold to it. I, I, I want you to really get a hold to it. So, did y'all get blessed today? Did y'all get blessed today? Did y'all get blessed today? Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you. So, right now, Father, the name of let's, 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 let's bless them again. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak now that they will go home and that their circumstances won't look the same. I speak now, Father God, that because of the awakening of a covenant mindset, that they will now look at their circumstance and situation from a completely different light. Satan, I curse the spirit of power. I reduce fear. I curse depression. I cast down hopelessness. Shut up, I'm sucker. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, I release your anointing in this place. Fear go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Fear go. Now. And peace is released in this place. As we go to our respective places, go enjoy, family. We love you, and we'll see you later this week. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.